Welcome to Lecture 1 of Biology.com entitled Biology and Learning. This lecture is our introductory lecture to the course and specifically how the course is going to work in terms of what you are expected to learn and how you are expected to learn while taking General Biology 115 here at Rutgers. So to begin our journey, we're going to talk about the brain. And there are five main components that we want to talk about in terms of the brain and its relationship to biology and learning. And we'll go through these each step by step, and this will be our first flowchart covering the brain. The first step that we want to look at is this idea of the brain um, during embryonic development. So let's write that down. During embryonic development. And if you don't know, embryonic just refers to embryo, or the state at which you are still developing within the womb. You are still not born, you are still developing. And this is what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the brain specifically at this stage of development, the embryonic stage. Two things we really want to focus on is this idea of regulated gene expression, which I'll explain in just a second, and I'm just going to write gene expression, it's EXP. One thing you'll start noticing about these flowcharts and the way that it's taught, I often abbreviate many things. These abbreviations are necessary because they actually force you to think of what was abbreviated, what did that stand for, and it's much better than just writing a word over and over and over again. It's a much more efficient way of sort of outlining your notes and information. So, during embryonic development, we have regulated gene expression, and we also have what is known as signal transduction. Um, and during this process, these two things are occurring, which basically means that both of these things give us what is known as synapse development. What does that mean? And we'll just write DEV. Synapse development essentially means that as you are embryonically developing, in that embryonic stage, before you're born, your brain is already creating synapses or connections between neurons. These connections between neurons are what allows our brains as humans to be so complex. Specifically, if we look at the embryonic development of the brain, we notice that this whole synapse development allows us to shape the neuro nervous system. We're shaping the nervous system. So we shape the nervous system during this time. This is our sort of way as humans to develop our brains. And so what's happening here, as I mentioned before, is that we're establishing those connections. These are crucial. We're establishing uh, absolutely crucial connections for life, actually. So what I mean by this is that as you are developing in the embryonic stage, you are shaping your nervous system through these synapse developments that allow you to create a brain, a functioning brain, that you can use for the rest of your life. So, what happens once this development has ceased and once you are born? You have this new idea that we can look at as number two of what is known as neuronal plasticity. Very fancy term, but it simply means that your brain has the ability to change and grow and develop even after this embryonic stage of development. The brain continues to develop even after that point. What we can say about this is that the brain, and we can simply say equals or is just a dynamic and changeable structure. It's a very dynamic, uh, dynamic, I'll just write that down as a C, dynamic, I'll write that over. Its brain is dynamic and changeable. For this reason, the connections between the neurons, remember what we call those? The synapses, right? These connections between, BTWN, will stand for between neurons, they can be modified, which is very, very cool to think that your brain has this ability to change even though you're already born, even though you've already had a brain that's developed embryonically, you still have the ability for it to change. And this change usually happens at the synapses, mostly at the synapses, 
And remember those synapses that were developed here? These are just connections between neurons. So they're mostly um, synaptic um, changes, but they are dependent on activities. This is very crucial. Dependent on the activities that you do. What does that mean? Basically, the connections that you make need to be reinforced to maintain information. So we can write that down. Connections must be reinforced. So to give you an example, you are obviously or have been learning all of your life. The learning happens because you are actively learning. You are trying to learn information, you are trying to make connections, but the connections that you make only become strong, only become accessible, only become good connections, let's say, when they're reinforced. How do you reinforce connections? What do you do? You do things like studying. You study hard, you study smart, and that's what's going to create a plastic brain, a brain that's dynamic and changeable when you are giving your brain these activities that allow it to succeed and change. Activity, let me just fix that spelling, activities. So, as you're doing this, you're creating a plastic brain. Your brain has this ability to change. And because it has this ability to change, there's one more thing we have to know. Number three out of five is that there's this idea of use it or lose it. So we're going to either use it or lose it. This is a scary thought, but it's true. We can think of this as the idea that neuron plasticity, I'm just going to write this as NP, is the establishment of memories. You know, it's when we establish memories, things that we remember, that is when we show our brain's plasticity. It has this ability to change. You gain information, you gain knowledge because of the neuron plasticity. But where does that use it or lose it come in? It comes in in this idea of activity-dependent brain. Activity-dependent. The amount that you use your brain influences exactly how much plasticity is involved, how much memories you develop. You can either, obviously, add or lose synapses. Both of these can happen. Both of these do happen. But what you obviously want to happen more of is this addition. And the addition of synapses results in increased, and that's just an increased sign, signaling. And if you have increased signaling, that means you're going to have more establishment of connections. That means you're going to reinforce that plasticity, that connection. You're going to reinforce all of that to create a nice, strong memory, something that you can remember and maybe use on an exam when you need to. Conversely, if you have this loss of synapses, you're not going to have increased signaling. You can also have decreased signaling, and we do not want that. How do we prevent that? We have to make sure that we use the brain efficiently and effectively. And what's the best way to do that? The actual best way is to make sure that you are activating multiple synapses. So if you activate multiple synapses, let's say multiple synapse activation, this means that and sort of guarantees that the signaling that you're going to do is not going to be low, but it's actually going to be high. Because you're activating so many synapses, you're going to create more signals, you're going to create a stronger overall connection, that's going to lead to the establishment of a much stronger memory. And a basic example we can finish off this, this part of the lecture is this idea of autism. And we can write this down over here. It's called the autism hypothesis. And this is something, just extra information, that's important because it helps us apply everything that we just learned, one, two, and three. On the autism hypothesis basically states that Early on, during this embryonic development, there's some sort of disruption. Something happens where the gene expression and the signal transduction does not allow synapse development and does not allow the effective shaping of the nervous system, which doesn't allow the establishment of these connections for life. This results in, after the birth, poor neuronal plasticity, a lot of losing of information. 
essentially the early childhood synapses. Remember those synapses that we talked about? Those connections in autistic children? The remodeling of it. The dynamic ability and the changeable ability of those synapses is flawed. It's just not good. It's problematic. And this gives people who have autism this inability to do things like socialize or even communicate effectively because these three things were negatively affected very early on in development, specifically in embryonic development, which led to bad sort of early, early childhood development, which then led to overall autism. So that's the application of this. In our next video, we'll round out the brain and the four and five parts of the brain that allow for learning to happen in biology.